Hi, my name is Alfred Ray and I'm an Xactimate certified trainer. And what I wanted to show you in this video is what Xactimate Mobile can do for you. You remember the old days where you'd go out to a house and you'd have your piece of paper, your pad, and you'd sketch out the rooms and they were never the right size and you've got too much information you're trying to put on the piece of paper. And then you take it back to the office and you always seem to be missing that one dimension you really need. So then at that point you have to start fudging and it just was a miserable experience. If those are still the days you're on now, man, you are behind the times you need to get into this century. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, how to do a little sketching here. We're going to sketch a room. We're going to photograph it. We're going to label it. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, what we got here, this is a, I picked this room because it's got a little bit of everything. It's an entry foyer. And you can see here, it's got a door right here that goes into the AC closet. And right here, you've got a front door that has got a uh, eight foot uh, tall door, three foot wide, standard front door. Standard front door is actually six eight, but this one's a little bit taller. And I've got two side lights on either side of it. Uh, they look like they're about a foot wide. Not, not the glass, but the side light itself looks like it's a foot wide. And it goes all the way down to the floor and matches up even with the, the top of the door. And then over here, you've got a missing wall, which is a standard six foot eight tall opening. And so, well, like I said, we got a little bit of everything. We got a door, we got windows. We got missing walls, so we're going to go ahead and start doing this. And so what I'm going to do here, I've got the, my, my Disto here. I'm going to turn on my Disto because that's really an important part. That's why you want to use mobile. And you'll notice up at the very top right, the Disto popped up. So it's, it's, it's communicating because it's been connected before. You can see that the little check mark. So the, the two are communicating. So we're ready to put down a room. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit that icon up at the top right. And that gives me all my options and it's set on room, it defaults to room. And I'm going to tap right here where it says sketch room. And I'm just going to tap anywhere on the screen. And then I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to slide it up here a little bit. And the first thing I want to do is let's label that room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit done down here at the bottom. Uh, you want to hit done because if you tap on that same room, it'll delete it. Or if you tap somewhere else, it'll add another room. So you tell it you're done so that you can go ahead and start doing some things in that room. All right, so we're going to tap that room again just to select it. And then down at the bottom right, we got our properties window. So we're going to hit on that properties window. And what we're going to do is we're going to type right here where it says room name. And we're going to tap on it, not type. And we're going to slide the picker up towards this custom name. I can go through there and look for names, but that just takes too long. The easiest way is just to hit custom name. Tap right here, which is name again. One more time. And that opens up my keyboard. And now I'm just going to tap on the microphone down here. Entry foyer. How easy was that? The room is labeled. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to dimension this room. So I'm going to close this up. And to dimension this room, I want to get my width here first. So what I want to do is I want to adjust my side walls. So I'm going to pick on one wall. I'm going to tap on the wall. And that's going to select it. And then I'm going to tap on it again. And it gives me the option to adjust the measurement. So you'll notice the arrow up at the top and the bottom of the room there to show you which end is pointing toward the wall that's going to move. So we're going to tap on that arrow. And that opens up my picker down at the bottom with my dimensions. Now I can manually go through there and change that dimension. But why? When I've got this handy little tool here that's going to make it easy for me. So I'm just going to put it here on this wall. Shoot it across the wall there. And there's my dimension. It's showing that, notice how the wall moved? It's showing that that room is six foot three. Now, if I want to accept that dimension, I can just hit that little double arrow there. Or if I want to get rid of the, the fraction, let's say I can just slide that down to zero, then hit the little arrow. And now I've got my room six foot three. Okay, I'm ready for now to get my length. So this time I'm going to tap the bottom wall because that's the one I want to move. And I'm going to tap on it again. And now it gives me the option of selecting the dimension, which I'm going to do. I'm going to tap on the arrow. And now there's my picker again. So I'm going to, I need to come here from this corner here. And I'm going to just get the dimension there of that wall. And there it is right there. Now notice this is 11 foot 7. And that's measuring to, to where a wall, it's measuring to this corner here. But I've got my drawing showing the wall down there. So I really need to subtract 4 inches because if it's 11.7 to here, minus 4, it's going to be 11 to 3 there. So I want to make it 11.3 so that when I delete that wall, my measurement will be accurate. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to change that. It's a good, good example for me to show you how you can change it with a picker. 
So I just slid it down to 11 foot 3. I'll get rid of that fraction. I'll tap on the double arrow. And now my width and my length is set. My room is named. I'm ready for my ceiling height. So I'm going to tap on the room again to select it. I'm going to pick on the properties down here at the bottom right. And I'm going to find my ceiling height. There it is right there. It shows 8 feet. That's what it defaults to. I'm going to tap on it. And notice how it says Disto Listening to the right. It's listening. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to shoot my ceiling height. And there it is, 9 foot 2 and 3 eighths. To accept it, I just tap right there with the ceiling height. And I've got my ceiling height done. I'm going to close this up. So now I've got my width, my length, my ceiling height, my room's named. And now I'm ready to, let's go ahead and draw this door in here. So all I have to do is come up here to my icon up at the top. That opens up all my options. I tap on the door. It's a standard door. And I'm just going to tap on the wall where it goes. And I'm going to hit done down here so I don't get another door. Now, how wide is that door? It looks like a three-foot door to me, but I could be wrong. So I'm just going to tap on the door. And notice it shows a standard 2-6 door. I'm going to tap on the dimension. No tape measure. Notice I'm going to open up this door. And I'm just going to shoot that dimension. I know it's a 6 foot 8. I'm not sure about the width. So there you go. Notice how it changed the width to two foot eight. So it's not a, a three foot door. So I'm going to hit done here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just so you can see how it changed it from two six to two eight. And it did. So now that door's done. Now, the direction of the door swing doesn't really matter in an estimate. It doesn't change the estimate at all. But if you happen to have one of those personalities that you like everything just so, notice down here at the bottom, I've got two icons, bottom right. One would change the swing, which is just the way it is, and the other one would change the hinge side. Swing, hinge side. So I think that's the way that door opens. Yep, that's it right there. So I've got my door done. All right, I'm ready to put in that other door right there. So let's just go ahead and tap on the door again. Tap on where it says the standard option, and I'm just going to tap right in the middle of that, that entry. And I'm going to hit done. And notice that if I tap on the door again to select it, I can slide it and it'll kind of snap to where the center is. Now that's a three foot door. So I'm going to tap on the two foot six and I'm going to change it to three. I don't need to measure this one because I know what it is. It's three foot wide and I'm going to hit done. And what it did, notice it moved both sides out. So it's still centered. Okay, so now I need to change it to an eight foot door. So I'm going to open up my properties down here on the bottom right. And I'm going to find my height, and I'm going to change that to 8. Just like that. Easy peasy. Okay, I'm ready to draw my little side lights in there. So I'm going to tap away here anywhere, just to... And I'm going to zoom in up at the top there to give you a little more room. I'm going to come up to the top right, tap on my... to get all my options, and I'm going to tap on the window. And this time I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to slide it and slide it and drag it and create a one foot window. There it is right there. Then I'm going to hit done. I could draw this other window on the left, but that would force me to go into the properties twice. So I'm going to fix one window and I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to tap on the window. I'm going to go to my properties. My base height is zero because it goes all the way to the floor. And my height is eight feet to match the door. And now I've got that window done, that side light. I can slide it over right there. And now I can come down here to the bottom. Notice right next to the trash can on the bottom right, I've got a copy tool. So I'm just going to tap right there on the topy cool, topy cool, <laughs> copy tool. And notice it said I could tap or drag. So I'm just going to tap right there. And there's my other window. And I don't need to go into the properties because... It's already done. So now let's let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. I'm going to hit the sprocket up here and go into 3D. Click on the sprocket to close it up. And now notice there's my door with the two side lights. Easy peasy. Tap on the sprockets, go back to 2D. Tap on the sprocket again. Let's move this up here. And we've got 
this door, door with side lights. And now we're ready to do this missing wall here. I'm gonna tap on my icon up there to get my options. And I'm gonna, you can see the little broken wall symbol there. One, two, three, four down. So I'm gonna tap right there. And right here is right next to it, to the left of it is my missing wall. So I'm gonna tap right there. And I'm just gonna drag my finger on that wall. I don't know how big that opening is. And I'm gonna hit done. And I'm gonna tap on the opening. I'm gonna tap on the dimension. Oops, looks like I missed it. Let's do it again. Tap on the dimension. And there's my picker. I come over here. I'm gonna shoot that. And there it is, it's three foot five and five eighths. Or three foot five, I'm sorry. So now I've got my missing wall there. I know it defaults to six foot eight, so I don't need to do anything in the properties there. But let's say that typically wherever the, the, the location of the missing wall doesn't really affect, just like the door doesn't affect the estimate. But if you want to put it, let's say it's a reference point for one of the other rooms, so it has to be in the correct location. All you have to do is just, now I'm not going to select anything, I'm going to tap, tap just to make sure nothing's selected, and I'm going to just, with my disto, I'm going to see how far this is, now that I've got it dimensioned, how far it is from the corner. And I shoot it there, and it is six foot one from that corner. So now I can just tap right on there and drag it up to six foot one. How easy is that? And now my, all my openings are done. My room is labeled and I'm ready to go to the next step, which would be taking my photos. So I've got this done. So I'm gonna come up here to this little hamburger looking thing. I can put my disco away for a minute now. So I'm just gonna turn it off, save some battery, put it in my back pocket. And I'm gonna tap on the little hamburger looking thing up there. And I'm gonna come down here where it says photos. There we go. And notice my empty foyer is already done. So I can tap on that and that's gonna put those photos that I'm about to shoot in my entry foyer. Now there's a camera down here at the bottom. I'm gonna tap on that camera. And then I'm gonna tap on camera. And now I'm ready to shoot. So let's come over here. Let's take an overall, overall view, overview of the room. Here's my first picture. I probably would have backed up a little more, but I didn't want to run into everything. All right, so let's say that I'm going to start, I'm going to go from ceiling down. Let's say I got a spot on the ceiling. Shoot. Let's say it runs down, gets the wall wet. Shoot. Runs down and gets the baseboard wet and goes up under the top. Shoot. And I just shot four pictures of the room. And I'm going to hit done up here at the top left. And now I've got my four pictures shot. Well, let's say I want to label them all the same with the same room. I'm going to just click on select up here at the top right and then hit select all, same place. And notice all four of them are checked off. Now I can come down here and tap on details and see where it says name, where it says multiple. I can delete that. Tap on my microphone, which is one of the great things about using this iPad is that the voice recognition is really, really good. It picks up on the you know, if you've got an accent or something, it kind of gets used to, you know, what you talk like. I'm going to tap on the microphone. Entry foyer. Now, all four of those rooms are already labeled. I'm going to deselect the three that I don't want. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to tap on description now. Tap on my microphone. Entry foyer overview. First one's labeled. Uncheck it, check the next one, details. Spot on ceiling from roof leak. Next one. Stain on wall from wall, stain on wall. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna to have to start this one over. <laughs> Let me go back there and delete that. I guess you have to speak clearly. That's the one drawback. Stain on a wall from roof leak. And the last one.
baseboard stained from roof leak, period, water running down, under tile, period, cork underlayment wet. Not bad, huh? And now I've got my four pictures, all labeled. I hit done, I hit my back button, and there it shows you that I've got four pictures taken in the entry foyer. So just like that, we drew, photographed, labeled, and now you're ready to start doing your estimate. In the beginning, you may not feel comfortable doing an estimate while you're there in the house until you learn how to search and maybe you've got some good macros, but if you're not comfortable, at least you're leaving the house and everything's drawn and everything's photographed and everything's labeled. So if you're ready to move on, I mean, that's the goal is you'd like to be able to finish your room, get out of there, go to the next room, finish that up. And then when you leave the house, there's not a whole lot to do. All right, so we've got our photographs taken. So I'm gonna tap over here. Let's go back to our estimate. There's our sketch. And you can see how easy all that was. So we're gonna end this video here. Hopefully you've gotten some benefit. You see what mobile can do for you. And hopefully we will see you in class. Well, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. I think it's down here somewhere. Or even better, subscribe so that you get to see any of the future videos that I post on here. Have a great day. We'll see you at the next video.